Hey On The Towners, I'm Frank Licari, and today we're dancing to the tune of Hispanic heritage here in Palm Beach County. We'll shop for one-of-a-kind handcrafted furniture in West Palm Beach, and discover the flavors of Latin America with some must-try restaurants. We'll even learn how important music is to the Hispanic culture. You are definitely gonna get a kick out of this week's episode. It's game time. Let's go on the town in the Palm Beach. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.tv for more information. From food to music to art, Hispanic and Latin American culture has tremendous influence on our Palm Beach community. And what better way to celebrate the culture than to start the week with some dance? There are so many different styles of Latin American dance, but today I decided to try my hand at some classics, salsa and bachata. I'm ready to get my groove on. There is something about the Latin the culture flavor. that just always feels like they need to be dancing. What is that? What it's is our it flavor? From? Is that what it is? We have flavor. It's in our body. Yeah. Oh, see, there you we go. We yeah. love to move. Yeah, yeah. The music tells you how to dance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is a very exciting day for you. Isn't this it? is. It is my first permanent location. Exciting. So it's super exciting. What do you mean permanent? We, we were doing it like on the run? And like, right. Let me teach you quick and then I'm out? I was like, on the corners. I would stop <laughs> on the corners and, and get out the car. If you're a beginner, what is the first thing you teach a beginner? The first thing you want to really do is listen to the music, understand what you're dancing to, the tumbao beat, the yep. cuckoo, pa, cuckoo. Ah, and try to stay on that rhythm. Right. Always the music, the movement, the steps, those are always the fundamentals. Can you teach anybody to dance? I can teach almost anybody yeah, to dance. I'm, I'm pretty confident. I consider myself the uh, ninja of dancing. I'm a black Whoa. belt in dancing. Wow. So let's try, we're gonna do some salsa steps. Sure. So first thing you wanna know is you wanna go with your left foot Should forward. I stand beside you? Let's do side by side first and then we'll do okay. partner work. So you're going left, left foot forward. Uh -huh and then your right foot goes back, right foot back. Okay, how long you been dancing? I've been dancing now for over 13 years. I danced my whole life, right. I mean, of course, sure. but like Latin ballroom, I started training in ballroom back 13 years ago. We go one, two, turn three, right foot back, five, six, seven, basic, one, two, three, five, six, right turn, one, two, three, oh, right foot back, I five, see. Oh, six, that becomes seven. part of the step. So salsa is what we eat, really. Right. So when we say salsa, it is a variety of different dances from uh, son, huahuanco, New York style mambo. Um, but for me, what I've learned is that all of our origination of dance started with Afro-Cuban, Afro-dancing, right. and yeah. then the Cubans started with their, their mambo and their son music, and it started to speed up. Salsa, we've made it like a melting pot of all these variety of dances. Kind of like the Hispanic culture, yes. right? We've taken a lot of different things. Different and cultures, call... and we put it all together. Right. And what about bachata? Where is bachata is a Dominican dance. Okay. Um, that's a slow paced dance, a little bit slower, and okay. it's got a more rhythmic beat moving side to side. Three oh. basic steps uh -huh. to the left and three basic uh -huh. steps to the right. What kind of people are coming in looking for the salsa in the butt? Is it mostly Hispanic or are you getting no. all No. It's the other way it's around. It's the other isn't way it? around. Because they already know how to do it. <laughs> they think they know. Right, 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 right. Five, ready, back, rock, swing, back, Whoa. two, three, five, right turn around the waist. One, two, three. Five, six, basic, S O. Okay. S -O. Oh, man. oh man, yeah. yeah. The Hispanic community in Palm Beach County is composed of so many different types of people, backgrounds, and cultures, and it certainly continues to evolve. The Hispanic Entrepreneur Initiative is all about helping the community grow and thrive through the development of Hispanic businesses. The Hispanic Entrepreneur Initiative is an organization. It was founded here in Boca Raton and is housed at Lynn University uh, Social Impact Lab. And we want to be an agent of change in the community. So we have created an ecosystem where other organizations work together and join these efforts to help Hispanic entrepreneurs to create diverse, sustainable businesses here in the U.S. 
through training to mentoring programs. How have you seen sort of the Hispanic culture change over the past so many years and how has that changed in this particular area in South Florida and Palm Beach County? Hispanic and Latino uh, people that are coming here are understanding and combining the two worlds. Sure. And just bringing that creativity, that that em emotion, that touch, and the demographics are always changing. But I feel that we are being embraced in a certain way because yeah. it's like it's, it's it's happening and it's growing, and you can find the mix and the fusion of all those yeah. elements. And, and everybody brings something of value. Right. So what? Well, not everybody. Everybody. <laughs> well, go ahead. Everybody does. So what you bring? And how it's done here. So what is that gap? So we are identifying that gap and helping them fill it. I'm really proud of every Hispanic person that comes and works very hard and makes it happen. If you're in the mood for a pick-me-up, there's nothing better than a strong cup of joe. Salento Coffee Shop in West Palm Beach is serving up traditional Colombian coffee. And I don't want to spill the beans, but this is one delicious cup of coffee. We're Colombians. Yeah. Colombians love coffee. Salento is a little town among the mountains in Colombia. We went to Salento for a fun trip. Like a 12 years ago. It is a beautiful land order. Everything is around the coffee. What makes Colombian coffee? different than every other region of coffee that everybody knows? A lot of things. This is one of the most questions that I want to answer. Mm -hmm. Good. That's why I asked them. <laughs> this is good. Tell me. Yeah, Colombian coffee is super special coffee. Yeah. We in Colombia, we just have Arabica coffee. 100% 100, 100 Arabica coffee. We plant the coffee at tropical rainforest. The soil over there is a volcanic soil. Ah. It makes the coffee much more tasty. Gotcha. Tinto is the way that the Colombian coffee farmers drink coffee out of the mountains. Oh. I'm gonna use this. Yes. You see? Now, now this looks like a little um, is it? Yeah. a little nightcap hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? It's just cloth. It's Simple just cloth. Fat. Simple, Simple cloth. Fabric. Okay. Next. Panela. This is the sugar, correct? This yes. Is the, okay. Unrefined sugar cane. We take one of those blocks and we make this syrup. Oh, so you make like a liquid sugar. Yeah, it is. This is the sweetener for yep. the coffee, right? Yep. We're gonna use a little, just a little. And then 100% premium Arabica Colombia. Gotcha. You see. Okay, I will you see. You ready? Yeah, of course I'm ready. So you are ready to grind your, your own coffee? Let's do it. Okay, all right. That is so the old-fashioned grinder. This is the old-fashioned grinder. We're gonna put the coffee in here. Okay. I have to do oh, it yeah, manually. Towards the work, the work. Like this. Don't so work out. Right. Yeah, you can do it. All right? <laughs> Come on, go. Oh, I can go, I can go faster? Of course. All right. All right. We are going to put the coffee here. You want to mix with the zero first. Oh. I don't want to put the, the syrup in here. You're going to put it in there? Yeah. Yep. This is a grandma's secret. Oh, wow. Grandma's who's secret. who's grandma? Yours oh, or everybody's? Well, grandma's. So every grandma. Every, every yeah, grandma knows yeah. this in Colombia. Okay, gotcha. So, uh, oh, wow. I'm going to pour a slow pour. We're gonna use super hot water. We want to extract the coffee. Right. You stir it and make a little press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the water a little bit at a time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that smells incredible. Yeah. And you know what? It's more than coffee, it's a coffee experience. Yes. And we don't have to do anything to this. We've already got the sweetener. We're not putting any cream or anything. No, we don't need it. It won't be tinto right. anymore. Cheers, okay. Sure. <laughs> oh, wow. Is it good? Let me tell you something. Huh? I drink coffee all the time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. since I'm eight years old. Okay. This, you're absolutely right, this is a very smooth cup of coffee. That's Delicious. the first thing I, because mm -hmm. I'll drink strong, light, but this is, it it's does taste like, like wine. A lot of coffee. Yeah, a lot of mm -hmm. caffeine in this, right? Yeah, it yeah. is. And there's nothing like pairing a cup of coffee with a fantastic meal. From tacos to empanadas to tostones, Palm Beach County has a lot to offer when it comes to Latin American cuisine. Food writer Arlene Borenstein met me at Salento Coffee to introduce me to some of her favorite local restaurants. The amount of variety now I know. of food that has kind of come up here in the last 10 years is just, it's kind of astounding, right? Lucky for us, we've been able to get those great traditions on a plate. You have the Caribbean and South America and yeah. Central America. So there are countless places to eat. As I'm going through Palm Beach County, what are the, in your expert opinion, what are the must 
try restaurants? Give me one. The first thing that comes to my mind is Taco Sal Carbon, which is a Mexican place. I tried their birria taco lately. It was outstanding. What it is, it's like a stewed meat. It can ah. be different types of meat. Okay. They shred it, they stick it in a taco with all the great fixings like onions and cilantro. And then you get this like styrofoam cup of like this red juice and you stick your taco you in dipping that. dipping tacos? You're dipping a Stop taco. It. Dip As if a taco tacos? wasn't already good already, right? Whoa, I've never so even heard of that. And okay. the sauce is outstanding. What's a Cuban must try restaurant in the area? Don Ramon is your traditional, authentic Cuban food. You want that black beans and rice, that yummy skirt steak, biste empanizado, mm -hmm. you can get it there and you're gonna leave there happy and like you've satisfied this Cuban craving. Give me one more, what else you got? La Rural Argentine Steakhouse. It's actually upscale, but it's very good. And if you like their steaks, they have a little market in the back where you can buy cuts of meat, items you wouldn't find in a normal supermarket, and Argentinian empanadas, which I personally love. You got one more for me? I got one more. Okay. So it's called La Cocinita Latina. They have all your beautiful, wonderful, traditional Puerto Rican meals. You got arroz con andules, mofongo. Mm. Everyone talks about the great chef there. Yep. Also reasonably priced and very yummy. It's okay to have these different options because like me, I had a heavy Venezuelan influence growing up, but I am American. We're all kind of these mixes and I feel like embracing that is, is so important for an establishment to do and, and not be afraid of that, but obviously to embrace like who they are. For sure. There's a restaurant, you go in and you're getting the way you would get it in the, in the home country. Which is beautiful because yeah. a big part of leaving your own country and starting a new life somewhere else is sharing that culture and having that little piece uh, of that culture for you, for yeah. others. Um, and that's really special and that's what food does. It brings us together. I'm heading over to Rosemary Square in West Palm Beach for my next stop. Rosemary Square attracts locals and tourists alike for its abundance of shops, restaurants, arts, and culture. I'm here at the center of the square, which is home to the popular Palm Beach landmark, the Harriet Himmel Theater. Now, although the city has changed around it and the theater is no longer open to the public, it's always served as a community and cultural center since its creation in 1926. You started an architectural firm. Tell me how that started with your father, right? Yes, in the late 50s, he joined me in my late 20s and we started REG Architects. I'm Cuban by birth, right? And my father, you know, was trained in Cuba as an architect. Right. And there's a great school of architects from the 40s and 50s who came to the United States, most of them to South Florida. So having that source of inspiration has been great. But I also studied in Guatemala in 1980 as a 19-year-old, you know, so that was great too. Early in my career to see uh, the beautiful architecture, the Indian culture, the Latino culture in Guatemala, and helping that uh, to form me as a, an architect. So 1996, we had a, a strong mayor, the first one in West Palm, Nancy Graham. She was a dynamo. She wanted to uh, change the urban setting of West Palm. There was 55 acres of land that had been purchased by another developer. They had demolished everything except for this beautiful historic church over here. And she put out an international invitation and she had one request. She basically said, propose whatever you want to do with these 55 acres. You have one requirement. You got to reuse this building. And that we did, you know, so we, uh, with a related company, the yep. owners, it started out as City Place. Today it's called Rosemary Square. We were able to restore the old church, it was a Methodist church, into a multi-purpose performance hall. And then on the ground floor, we opened it up to create shops. So it's been a fantastic building. It's one of the uh, prime historic projects that I've done in my, uh, my career. It really is one of the most unique buildings around. These kind of buildings are very important in South Florida because uh, we're growing so fast, we're changing so fast, so they become like the heart and soul of a place. So when you anchor new development around a significant historic building, you have the best of both worlds. And you have that legacy of a place, right? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of tough when you come to South Florida and everything is shiny new. Yeah. It's very nice when we have areas of our community that are anchored in history and that that history gives us a sense of place. We belong here, we have a sense of ownership in this area. We're moving on to experience another unique form of art, furniture making. 
I'm heading to Mario Lopez Torres Furniture, a shop that sells one-of-a-kind handcrafted pieces that are made by Mario himself. We have a lot of animals. Yes, it's a big theme. We got elephants, jaguars, who, uh, like Lion Country Safari, so <laughs> with, with the furniture store. It's really cool. Mario Lopez Torres, he's a Mexican artist. He was influenced by uh, a lot of different arts uh, since he was really young. And when he was 20 years old, he uh, got really interested on the uh, metal handling art. Mm -hmm. And so that's how his art a little bit comes through. Gotcha. All of these designs are originally by him. All of our pieces have a metal structure gotcha. and then it's all woven on a reed uh, that comes from the bottom of a lake where he is now, actually. Wait, the, all of this comes from the bottom of a lake? Yes. <laughs> In Mexico? Yes. Whoa, well that, yeah. you threw me on that one. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. So does he get, does he source the materials? Yes, so they actually just take it out of the lake. He's working with like more than 20 families that lives with him in his town because it's like a little town of like 4,000 people. And so they all work together. The natural color is green. And that's when it's malleable to put it all together. So as soon as they take it out, they need to start like moving everything to wow. the metal structure of the piece. And with time, it will uh, dry out. Okay. And this is the color actually that the piece will turn to. Natural. Yeah. So all of this is natural. It's not ma yes. manufactured this way. It all that's the color we get. You have what I would consider an art piece. He considered himself a furniture maker, but we're like, he's an artist. He's an like artist. Is the inspiration, I guess, just his surroundings, right? Just where he's exactly. from. Exactly. Just where he's from. Lady Katrina is like a Mexican uh, icon. So. Oh. It's a, I think it's a really um, unique piece because it represents like El Dia de los Muertos, that is a very important thing in Mexico. You had a lot of jaguars. Jaguar in general is one of uh, Mario's favorite animals. And the jaguar is saying, hey, you know, put something on me, <laughs> right? It must take an immense amount of time to make this if yes. it's all handmade. It depends, of course, on the piece, but it will take around a month to almost a year. But how special once you get it to know that. Exactly, wow. yes. There's no better way to commemorate Hispanic heritage than with a festival. The Hispanic Heritage Festival at Palm Beach Atlantic University originated 12 years ago to celebrate the culture through a display of art, music, and poetry from various countries. And did you know that the founders of the festival are not only husband and wife, but musicians themselves? That's music to my ears. After so many years, yeah. we really know what's going to happen. Right, How to wait you know for each another. other's, yes. So it's very comfortable to play with each other. Right. Um, How long has it been that you've been playing piano together as a duo? Since 1993. 93? Yeah. Yes. That's a long, that's a lot of music. Yes. Does it still get you? Yeah, when you sit down together, do you ever look at each other like? <laughs> yeah, we do. You do? You're yeah. like, I can't believe I just love <laughs> you so much. Yeah, right? What made you start the, the Hispanic Heritage Festival? Well, we started this in 2009. That was our 10th mm -hmm. anniversary in Palm Beach County. And uh, we just wanted to, to do like a, our present, our gift to Palm Beach County. The focus of the festival is classical music oh. from Spain, Portugal, uh, South, South and Central America, but including Brazil also. So oh. it's not only Spanish yes. speaking, but even Philippines and things like that's that. That's amazing. Where else would I go to find that? Even in the festival, we perform contemporary music from living composers. Gotcha. Yes. I mean, here and there, we, we throw a piece in the middle of the others. Because it's important for to, to keep the culture going. Every year is different. Oh, yeah. We had uh, uh, singers. Singers, a uh, string um, quartet, uh, flutists, violin concerts. Wow. Yes. Yeah. But this year, 
uh, we started also conference. Mm. Conference. Okay. So people from all the country and other countries, South America, submitted papers, and it will be amazing. It's a full Saturday of lectures. lectures. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's educational. Yeah. Yes. 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 Very yes. nice. Yes. So it, it, I guess when I'm coming to this uh, festival, I'm getting a little bit of everything. I'm not. I'm not just getting a music education. Mm -hmm. I'm getting also a cultural education, yes. right? Right. right. The audience, when it's in the house, um, is the only concert that actually people shout to us in the middle of the piece. It really gets... That's fun. Yeah. You, know, you don't go to a classical, usually to a classical no. concert, yeah. people shouting out. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they sing along if they know the melody. Fantastic. So it's, it's very warm. Oh, very nice. Oh, I could listen to that all day. Yes. It's time to think outside the box. My next stop in this week's adventure is the Box Gallery in West Palm Beach. Curator and artist Rolando Chang Borrero uses this gallery to push the boundaries of art and spotlight a diverse set of artists, all while staying rooted in community. I'm seeing abstract art, I'm seeing modern art, I'm seeing philosophers up on the wall, I'm seeing mm -hmm. glass sculptures. Talk to me a little bit about the Box Gallery. The Box Gallery is a think tank, basically. More than anything else, it's like an old world art salon um, where we deal with a lot of current issues, a lot of topical issues. We're not your typical aesthetics-based gallery. So now it seems to me that you mm -hmm. should call this the out of the box. Um, well, that's the irony of it. <laughs> Amazing, amazing artist because of who they are, where they're from, maybe maybe it has to do with their ethnicity, maybe it has to do with their lack of privilege and access, mm -hmm. but they deserve to be seen and heard. That's amazing. So you're like an ambassador for the, uh, for the artist. Um, they do the work. Right. All, all I, I do is make sure that it gets seen. Yeah. I am not telling you to think one way or the other. Right. I'm telling you to sit with this notion and contemplate it. You're an artist. Yes, I am. Okay. Are you still painting? I'm drawing? still painting and I still have four upcoming exhibitions that, that I... So you're a busy guy. Yeah. I am giving you the highest respect when I produce work and consciously because I am allowing you to come up with your own interpretation uh, and filter it through your reality where you came from, through the filters that have affected you. Right. And hopefully from that point, then we could learn empathy mm -hmm. and understanding that we are not all cookie cutter. You've got your gallery, you're doing outreach into the community, you're doing art walks, you're doing all these things, mm -hmm. you're putting it all together, you're getting people involved, you're finding artists, you're connecting artists, I mean, it's fantastic. It wouldn't be a week of celebrating Hispanic heritage without mentioning the most popular sport in Hispanic culture. That's right, we're talking soccer or football. I'm at Sand Pines Park in Boca Raton to see if I can kick it with the Sabre Soccer League. Before hitting the field, it's always good to do a little warm up. If I'm coming in so as not to embarrass myself, what's the position that I should start with? But a lot of people want to be, they want to be the striker, another one that goes course, up top to score. wants to be the goal. Scorer. Exactly. They want to be the, uh, the hero. In my opinion, the hero is at every single position. The Soccer Association of Boca Raton started in 1977. We have players from every part of the country, every part of the world, right. um, different backgrounds. And so. different levels of skill. Right. Yeah. Everybody's so. welcome. It is an international game. What does the game of football mean to your culture? Well, remember, in South America, 95.55% play soccer. So we all tried to do that. And then when I came here, Sabre Recreational for the Kids started, and I became one of the soccer coaches. And one of the lack of the things that happened is that the parents didn't know the game. Sabre Adult was created inviting coaches, parents, sponsors, no matter the skills, 
but they, we wanted them to understand the game. So that's how it started. If I show up with my lack of skill, <laughs> can I play? As far as skill level, age, gender, no requirements at all. Um, we've got people who come out who've never played soccer before. We're opening a competition program this year for our more skilled players. Wow. And then everything else in our program is recreational. So the biggest thing we ask is for people to come out, have fun, have a good time, not take it too seriously, right? The soccer game unifies us, right? We have things in common, but how competitive does it get out here? Is there a little rivalry? Well, that's one of the best things about this group is that when it is, it becomes, com you know, very competitive. Right. But at the same time, we control everybody. It's, hey guys, no slight tackles. Hey, this is recreation, and we all have to work tomorrow. Sure. It's like, so it's, it's like have fun. Teasing each other. That's right. Yeah. Each other. That's fun, though, isn't it? It's, oh yeah. yeah. Today we learned what it takes to make the perfect cup of Colombian coffee. We danced our way to becoming masters of salsa, and we experienced beautiful art through paintings, furniture, and architecture. We hope you'll get out and celebrate the Hispanic heritage and culture that's in your own backyard. I'm Frank Licari. Join us next time when we go on the town in the Palm Beach. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three. Back to basic. I may, and I may just have a one, natural One, two, flavor. three. You got the flavor. Yes, you do. One, two, three. Ready? You go. This program was brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.tv for more information.